Welcome to the eighth episode on the series of videos on the CDP4. Um, today I'm going to explain how uh, to use uh, parameter subscriptions and I'll start by explaining what parameter subscriptions are. So what we have to do as always is connect to a server. I do that. I connect to the public server with username admin and password pass. I open the session. Then I open the model that we've been working on, the demo model. I select the second iteration and I will act as system engineer. And I open the model. Then I go to element definitions and also product tree. Those are my standard go-to views. And here you see we have the space mission that contains a launcher, a satellite, two batteries, and four reaction wheels. And you see the building blocks that we can use on the left-hand side in the element definition browser. What I want to do now is show you how you can actually use parameters that are owned by different domains of expertise uh, so that you can get them as input into your uh, analysis and computation, do something with them, and then send the result back to the CDP, which is what the CDP is built for. Um, so what I want to do is instead of manually computing the total mass of the satellite, I want a way to actually do that on the basis of data provided by the other domain experts. As you saw before, uh, we defined a battery which has a mass, we defined a reaction wheel which has a mass uh, and values, um, and we see that the satellite contains two batteries and four reaction wheels. And the total mass of my spacecraft, just to keep it simple, is the aggregation of the masses of these building blocks. Um, but what I have to do is I have to tell the CDP that I want to use those parameters as input. Um, that has multiple reasons. First of all, is you let the other team members know that you are using that parameter as input. And second of all, when we go back to the Excel add-in, you will see that only those parameters and or subscriptions that I own are actually generated. Uh, and we do this to make sure that you actively subscribe to parameters um, so that you let the team know what you're using. Now, what you may notice is that the parameters in the product tree uh, are have a, basically a sphere as an icon. Um, and the color of the sphere has meaning. Orange means that the parameter exists, but nobody is subscribing to it. Um, a parameter becomes blue when it exists and somebody has subscribed to it, and it becomes white if you are subscribed to it. So it gives you that color code so that it's, it gives you an overview of, uh, of the data, so that it's easy to recognize what you own and what you don't own and what you need to basically keep track of. So since I own the mass parameter, I cannot subscribe to it. So you see that the menu item is not enabled, but the other parameters I don't own. So the battery is owned by, the mass of the battery is owned by power and the mass of the reaction wheel is owned by AOG and C. So I'll just go and create subscription. So I right, right mouse click on the parameter and then I, I click on the create subscription menu item. So we now see that both of these are, I am subscribed to. And you may also notice that the icon in the element definition browser changed. A parameter has the squiggly line with uh, dots in it and a subscription has a straight line in it. So I can also show to you that you can also subscribe to it um, from here. So from the element definition browser, I do that. The icon changes. Also, the color changes here. And what you may notice also, and I'm going to make this a bit wider, you see that the owner column has changed as well. So normally, or not normally, but when there's no subscription, the owner of a parameter um, is noted like this. And when I, let's say without square brackets, and when I own the subscription, the ownership um, is changed so that you see that uh, that is actually the case. So it, the parameter is owned by power, but I own the subscription. And also, I only see my own subscriptions in these views. So if somebody else has a subscription, it would become bold, but actually it would become blue, sorry. Um, and in this case, I wouldn't see them. Now, if I go to the parameter, 
define the parameter here um, and I inspect it, you will see that every parameter also a details uh, view also has a subscriptions uh, tab where you can see all the owners that have subscribed to this parameter. Now, in this case, the mass of the satellite is not subscribed to by anybody, so it's empty. Um, but when I log in later as a different domain expert, you will see that that uh, changes. And I'll show that at the end of the video. So now I've actually subscribed to it. I can also um, change the value of my subscription. And what you see here is that as opposed to a parameter, um, where I can put in the values of the computed manual reference and formula slots. For a subscription, I can do something similar. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually telling the system, even though the owner of the parameter has said that the value is five kilogram, I think it should be six. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to work with that six. So I'm going to change the switch to manual and now you will actually start working with the six kilograms so when i uh, go to excel i will have the six as value for my subscription that means that um, when you disagree with your uh, colleague or when the, your colleague is still working uh, and he has not yet provided a value which can happen then you can provide your own manual value. Now, everybody can see that you are using a manual value in your subscription and not the value proposed to you by your team member. So it's part of the concurrent design process to gradually go through computed values for all subscriptions so that you rely on what your team members provide to you. So you have the opportunity to provide your own best guess so you can kickstart computation. And while your colleague is still doing computations and maybe publishing data to you, you can still work on the basis of your own estimate. Mind you, don't forget to go to compute it when the time is right, but it's up to you and the team to decide when that time is right. So now I will go to Excel. Um, I will connect to the same server. I will open the same model. And of course, as system engineer in iteration two. And what I will do is I will rebuild the parameter sheet in this workbook. And again, you see here that you have some information so you know where you are. You're opening the demo in, uh, engineering model in iteration two as system engineer and in this new workbook. If you have multiple workbooks uh, active, you can select in this window uh, to which workbook you want to actually send the data and generate the sheets. So here you see, I have in my option one, I have all these parameters. And in the element that's in the parameter sheet, you see that the actual value that I'm going to use as input for my analysis is the manual value that I provided in the uh, desktop app. So if I go to a calculation sheet and I do something like total mass, um, is equal to, and I'm going to put in um, bat one, bat two, reaction wheel one, and then let's see if Excel can help me and is actually smart enough to make it all the way to four. It is. Here I type equals, I go to the parameter sheet, and then I say the mass of the battery, that's this one. And you also see that we have this model code here, so equals bat.m is basically what I can type. And I can do the same here, equals bat dot m, same value, equals reaction wheel dot m, and I do the same for the others. Oops, I didn't want to save, that's sort of a reflex that I have. Now I'm going to see why the reaction wheel is zero. That should not have happened. That's a bit odd. I was actually expecting this to be four, so I made a mistake. I should have actually typed the M here, and now it's four as well. So you see that you can use normal Excel formulas to work with the data, but you can also uh, use these cell names. And basically, cell names are named variables for a cell. And in this case, they correspond to the model code 
of uh, the items that I've designed. Yeah. So total mass, and I'm going to move that down, is the sum of these items. So oh, again, my reflex to save changes. Um, so you see that I've made a very simplistic mass table or mass budget. Um, and now I'm also going to give this cell a cell name. I'll just call it total mass of satellite. Yeah, so you see that. If I use that cell name, you see that it also appears here. So I can use that variable all over the place. And if I go back to my parameter sheet and I go to the mass of the satellite, which is a parameter that I own, I can say equals total mass of satellite. I can put the value to computed. So now I'm actually using my computed value, the one that I've ana analyzed in this spreadsheet. And you see that I made an arithmetic mistake. Never trust doing calculations uh, sort of in your head at least don't trust me to do that always use your uh, calculator in this case uh, microsoft excel and what i'm going to do is i'm going to submit the changes that i made to this data back to the server so you see here you have this menu item submit i click on all and here you sort of get a uh, short overview of the data that you've changed so you see before picks up that i've changed uh, the sat.m parameter. Um, for now, I'm not going to add a, a message here. And I'm going to submit it to the server. Now, if I go back to my desktop app and I refresh the data, which you can, by the way, have an auto refresh, but I'm going to do it manually, you will see that now the value is publishable because the computed value is 28. Published is still 36. So if I finish this round trip of uh, generating data. Um, I can publish that. And now the rest of the team uh, can also continue their work on the basis of this 28. Yeah. So now you've seen how to create a subscription, why you would create subscriptions, even how that links to Excel doing computation and sending the data back to the server and even publishing it so that the new update becomes available for the whole team. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.